Hi guys, I'm at the, uh, heading to the Phelps Conroe Reptile Show, and, um, this is my, uh, my mask that I use to when I go to, when I go to places that are, what would you call, high contact points for, uh, COVID, but, you know, I wear my mask, and I'm safe, so, uh, yeah. Let's enjoy this reptile show. <laughs> oh, can't flip the camera right now. But, there it is. Hey guys, I saw this little pole. Yay! We got heel monsters. Heck yeah, that's cool. I think those, those are young too. They might be Captain... Captain Bird? Nice, yeah, Captain Bird heel monsters. Cool. Hey guys, I'm on fairly friends and pets and friends and they've got baby toko gecko heck yeah you don't normally see these in, uh like in, in the in the in the hobby so this is a captive whale well, that's really cool baby toko gecko dude dude for the bioactive enclosures there you go got your fly traps okay not for bioactives that's really cool we got the, the Dente fly traps. That's pretty cool. And then what are these? Looks like kept some kind of honeydew. Hi guys, back in more videos from the show. We have some palmettos over here. This is an ultra metal palmetto. A lot of fun colors in there. Uh, very light colors, a lot of, lot of reds and browns off, off of the ultra metals. Um, over here we have a uh, black house snake. Pretty, uh, pretty small size colubrid. Uh, pretty comparable to cone snakes. Um, but they eat a little bit smaller food, they only get around three feet, three feet long. So if you want a small, a small colubrid that reminds you of a cone snake, that's, that's going to be it. But the solid colors say they don't have the North American uh, rat snake pattern that the uh, horse snakes have, like like you see over here, which is a beautiful pattern. I love the I love the clump snakes, uh, the, the North American rat snake pattern. And over here we have some uh, caramel palmettos, but metal palmettos. This is actually the most palmettos I've seen at a show, all, especially all together, which is really cool. You have a nice uh, skeleton clump snake right there. Uh, not a lot of, not a lot of scales on that one. That's a pretty good, pretty good quality scaleless. And there you see the Anoe scaleless also. Beautiful snake. There's some amazing, uh, some amazing palmettos right there. Well, this is a plus for me at a show. That is a, uh, an anaconda. Is that a green anaconda? That's a green anaconda. First one I've seen at a show. Here we go. I'm looking through the, looking through this table and I'm, I see the clone snakes up here and above the clone snakes. I see some Eastland black rat snakes. I keep these. Uh, these seem to have a little more brown in them than the one I got. Do you have any, um, um, on the Eastland black rat snakes, where do you get those from? Or do you breed them yourself? I breed them. Yeah. How, how do you? I used to live in Kentucky, so we caught a gravid female one year. Oh, nice, nice. I kept, I kept some of the babies and released her and the other half of the babies. Nice. So. Um, how, how dark was she then? She's dark. She's the front, like two thirds of her, is like a really, really dark slate color. Yeah. Not black, but dark slate. And then her back half has that like chain link pattern, and it's kind of yellowish. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I have black rat snakes too. Yeah. And um, you don't you don't see black rat snakes in this area at all. Yeah. Uh, I think. Um, Go for your pet ha has like one on the table. Okay. And they're selling it for like a hundred. Seems kind of high. I mean, what, what do you sell yours at? These are only fifty five each. And then, I mean, it's just a black rat. Snake. Yeah, that's that, that's what that's what I told them. It's like for me, it's like a nostalgia thing. Like, yeah. I grew up with the black rat snakes. Yeah, so all, I like them. <laughs> and the places where they live, they're all over the place. Yeah. Except they are. for except for like in Connecticut, which oh, is a, yeah. it's up the northern northern range. Uh huh. And on, at Connecticut, they, um, I think they're protected because 
but they don't have very many of them in Connecticut. They're nice over there. They get really black in some of those places. Yeah. No, I was, I, I got my bloodline pretty, pretty, pretty diversified, and um, so I have one from, so he was, a, he was actually a wholesaler that I bought it from, but it was a little, little sketchy because I don't, don't really like buying, like, buy from wholesalers, but it was healthy enough, and uh, she's like a, a year and a half old now, and she's doing great. That's good. Um, I didn't realize how, how much more they need to get fed than corn snakes. <laughs> they process quick, too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, the thing is, like, on the black rat snakes, like, on the corn snake, you feed it, you feed it like, uh, you have to feed it just as often, but you have to feed it a little bit more. Yeah. Because they're all long, longer snake proportionally. Yep. yep. So, they have a bigger stomach, and you, have to, you really kind of have to fill it up on a feeding. Yeah. Yep, for sure. And um, so I was feeding them, feeding them like a little bit more than my clone snakes, but it was the same size as my clone snakes at, at the same age. So I was like, and then I got uh, some some more of this uh, this last year, and I was like, I'm gonna feed it as if it was a hatchling, and feed it as, as often as you normally feed a hatchling for the same amount of time that you feed it that often for a hatchling. And it was already the same size as the one I had for a year. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so I was like, well, I learned something. So, yeah. but she's a, she's a female and I got her like a year before I got got the other ones. Yeah. So, you know, there's plenty of time to catch up and like, not, I'm not rushing to read all just yet. So, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, but, but, the, but she's a, she has a lot of, a lot of contrast with the white. So she's not like a brown. Like the brownish, like that, like these seem a little, little brown. Yeah, as babies, yeah. But uh, she, like your whole black, she was a like a black and gray scale. Yeah. But her white, she has a lot of contra contrasting white. That's nice. So the whole pattern really, really stands out. Yeah, yeah mine don't have too much white. Not. Out. It wasn't really what, I, what, I'm, what I'm going for, but for Jay, most of my bloodline, it works. Yeah. But um. But I got a new one uh, from Jason Trapp. He's uh, he has a, a, like a couple of breeding pails, and that's it. Yeah. And um, I think and uh, his is really dull. So I got one from him, and um, not too much white, but like I think it was like a dark gray. Oh, okay. So like this steak is going to get black fast. Oh, nice. The ones in yeah. Mississippi are really strange too. Yeah. Like as adults, they still have the high pattern and they're really gray and yeah. hot. I mean, they're, they're definitely different localities. I mean, they all they they're all very clearly black rat snakes, right, but right. but they stand out differently. Like I have one that's uh, not an eastern, but a um, more of the western black rat snakes, okay. and I think it's it has a little bit. It's mostly black, black and gray. But it has a little bit of red hidden on the sides in, yeah. the, in the pattern. Oh, yeah. I like the red on those. And, but it's just a fan amount of red. But what it does have is a lot of frosting. You know what I mean by frosting in the, in the saddles? Yeah. So, like, the saddles are, like, gray inside and white inside, which is kind of crazy. I, I guess if you like it, it's not what I'm going for once right. again. But, right. you know, it's a good starting point. Right. Because, um... Chris Kaluta, he's in Louisiana, and he has a uh, leucistic line, a leucistic gene that is completely recessive, and he and he gets in arguments all the time with people say, say like, oh, that's not a, that's not a recessive gene. Leucistic is a is incomplete dominant because you get the rusty. But he's like, no, I had this beforehand, and they have people argue like, oh no, that's a leucistic Texas. That's a Texas leucistic. It's like, I guess it's like, so it's, yeah. <laughs> you so, need to take a genetics class. Well, I don't know if he's, I don't know if he's, if he's outcrossed it yet. If he's outcrossed the uh, the Texas leucistic with his, with his yet to see if they're compatible. Um, I mean, I guess it kind of screws up his bragging rights because his story is that he got the uh, the post Texas, his post leucistic. It was like a beat up snake. Like, 
it was barely alive. It was it had it had been beaten up pretty badly, but it was a male, and he got it. He got it to mate. So like he saved like he saved the gene. Like he got it. He got it was like really young. I think he might have been like like fourteen when he got it, but. Um, but yeah, so that was back in the back in the eighties, like about two years before the Texas Pacific was was discovered. So he has that he has that bragging right, but he gets uh, but people want to argue with him about it all the time. And it's like you really it's sort of it's sort of it's sort of win those arguments. The best thing you can do is just I don't know if he's if he if he's tested it yet, but. The way I see it, I'm not going to argue with them. If that's what he says it is, that's what it is. If someone's to argue, argue with me about it, go talk to him. If you convince him, convince him, I'll change all my paperwork to be, be in alignment. But you have to change his mind, not mine. Anyway, good, good chatting with you. Uh, with fascination of tiles. Hi. That is a nice big snake. Is that a is that a not not for sale pet or is that yeah not for sale? It's actually illegal to sell Texas indigos. And that's what I was thinking. Yeah. Is like you can't. I just bring her to show her off. Oh, most most people have never seen one, so. Oh no, I think. You know, it's just, I think someone on the other side of the show had a uh, had a yellow yellow tail caribou. It sold real quick. Yeah. I wanted to get a video of it, but I didn't. I, yeah. I didn't think about. It. I knew. So, like when I was looking at it, someone else was eyeballing it, and I think yeah. they got real nervous about that. But if we do see her, yeah. so, uh, no, I mean, this is the first time I've seen an in indigo on yeah. so like, it's, yeah, it's definitely something I want to, I want to get a video of, get to the YouTube channel, people to, to see that. So, I mean, I'm a, I'm a, hey guys, in that, Russell's table. Russell doesn't really sell snakes online. He doesn't really lose the snakes online. Hey, if you talk to him on Facebook, he's really cool about it. And he has something really cool over here. It was the um, an Anary Okuchi, which was over here. I did that last time, but then it's, it lost in my thousands of photos. Beautiful. And the Okati. I don't really see these online, but Russell has them. That's really cool. Oh, sorry. I'm on this side. <laughs> so, uh, I don't know. He live right there in Willis. Russell is a uh, cone snake specialist, and uh, he does other stuff too, but he does obviously does a lot of cone snakes, a lot of moths. And if you want to get a hold of Russell, that's his phone number and his name. Call him up. If you're in Texas, I don't think you should. You don't ship, right? You don't ship your. Uh, ship. Are you a ship? Oh, cool. Russell's a good guy. I bought from him. Oh, Keeps his stuff really clean. Oh, you didn't go to No, I didn't. But it's great. You know what, Nathan? Get up. Let's see if we can get out. We have a. Uh, Whoa, that's great. See, Sarah Topaz over here. Topaz is the lava and caramel. It looks like Rosie, it's an albino. Yeah, well. Uh, Hair lambda, head diffused. A lot of good jeans on that snake. Worth the $300 price tag, especially with the uh, head lambda in there. Very good. What's your name? I'm Tiffany. Tiffany. Yes, hello. I've been talking with you for like the last. Six, seven conventions. It hasn't been that long. I've only been to like three, three, three my entire life. Well, you've been it's been all three of them. Yes. I recognize you every single time. I mean, anyone recognizes the mask. It's true. It's close to the mask. Oh, I know. Here's the, I took off the mask, no one would recognize me. That's, that's it. <laughs> Actually, that is true. Yeah. So Tiffany has something really cool. It's a... It's a the Acacia tree rats. The Acacia tree rats. So... And there's there's some nesting here and some down here and there's, there's one sleeping right there and this is their first show so I'm just going to let them hide so yeah. they're more comfortable but they're really cool um, in Africa they live in the really thorny acacia trees they much like sugar gliders they will chew into the tree to drink the sap so they don't have to leave the tree to find water. They also eat the bark, 
and the flowers. Yeah. Uh, the females will stay in the nest the entire time that the pups are there. They also, much like uh, spiny mice and other African rodents, they do have a long gestation period of about 36, 40 days. Oh, that's a pretty long time for all rodents. But they do come out fully furred. They're just their eyes aren't open yet. Okay. So, they came, they essentially, they came out of fuzzies instead of pinkies. Yeah, like within days, their eyes are open and they're already, you know, walking around the nest. But basically, mom will sit on them until they're about the size of this little one here. And then under her is a teenager. I don't, know if we, I don't know if it can be seen or not. It's fine. You don't have to get oh, them out. You, I can just open it and you can put the camera there. Uh, I don't want to stress them out. Okie okay, dokie. Yeah. But, no, they're soup. Like, they are one of my, my favorite right now outside of the uh, pygmy African dormice. Yeah. Just because they look like little big squirrels. But these guys live for about... In the wild, it varies due to predators. In captivity, about five, six years. Oh, that's, pretty, that's pretty good for all for rodents. Yes. Wait, wait, wait. You say they look like little squirrels. Do they have fluffy tails? Oh, the dormice? Oh, the, these guys? No, they have an incredibly long tail that they use for balance and for jumping. Okay. Like if they were up here and they started to fall, they'd wrap their tail around it. Yeah, so it's kind of prehensile. Not fully, but yes. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, you can see the tail just coming down right here. And that's from the teenage female, and her tail's about almost seven inches. Yeah. And and their little faces, uh, they have a very cross between a squirrel and a sugar collider. Yeah, I can definitely see that. Uh, mine don't, because they're uh, third generation domesticated. Yeah. And these guys are like my six or seven. Oh, I love that thing. <laughs> they got the kawadi going. Yeah. Kawadi's having a good time. Oh, yeah. Might be having a good time. Might be. <laughs> oh, no. Back to good times. But, yeah, with these guys um, in captivity, um, you can't really get acacia trees, as we spoke about in the U.S., because yeah. they're very invasive. So, the diet is adjusted to applewood branches, okay. other fruit trees. They re they really like grapevines. That's good. Yeah. Well, they're very abundant in most places, so they're really easy. No, um, it's, fresh, it's fresh grapevines that they like, right? So, uh, it's fresh or dried. Okay. Because, you know, if you get a, if you get a grapevine, you can get a grapevine established in Texas. It's kind of it's kind of difficult to get one established. Once you get it established, it'll... Oh, yeah. It will not go away. <laughs> But my mom planted some, and it was like a 10-year battle to get rid of them. Yeah. So, so yeah, they're, they're grape, grapes are very, very bountiful. <laughs> um, I feed mine uh, because they're also insectivores like most uh, African rodents. Yeah. So they get mealworms, superworms. Uh, every once in a while, I will give them like some dubia roach or something that they can chase. Yeah. And use their hunting instinct you know, as an enrichment. And they like pecans, they love almonds. Um, I was, when I got their parents, I was told they like acorns. Mine are like no acorns. Yeah. Premium, premium nuts only, thank you. Um, walnuts, they like to open them, but they don't eat the walnut. Oh, it's just, it's just stimulation for them. Yeah, they're just like, oh, look at that, that's so neat, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, trying to think, I'm sorry. I had an hour of sleep, so my brain isn't where it normally is for you, as you, as you know, can tell, because... You yeah, know, no, it's, it's, it's understandable, it's, it's a, it's, it's a reptile show, of course we can't. Yeah. We can't be nice to ourselves and give, us, give ourselves <laughs> enough sleep. No, no, we're hyped for it. Um, when they're full grown, they're about, the body part's about that big, okay. and then with the tail, they're about that long, and after they get to the size of the teenager, which is about that big, they just start getting fatter. Okay. Um, 
and they can they can be very dis so, so they like to hunch up like rabbits so they look three times bigger yeah if they feel intimidated unlike other people that go yeah stand up tall but mostly they're and they're nocturnal which yeah. is why they're sleeping so about seven o'clock to about four in the morning all you can hear is wheels in my <laughs> rodent room yeah and it's mostly them um 10 and 20 for the for dwarfs. Yes. So 10, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, no, it's right. No, I mean, you're here at a show to, to talk about, I mean, to sell animals, not to talk about animals. I mean, we want to talk about animals, of course. Like, well, you know, I like teaching lessons. Oh, yeah. yeah I'll, I'll talk your ear off when I can actually remember the facts. <laughs> yeah. Like, I've been studying up on these Syrian yellows. Cause yeah. I plan on bringing those in the future. Well, let's talk about what else. What else we have on your, on your table? Because you well, really, last you time I saw you was just it was just geckos. Last time I saw you, so. Uh yeah, that's because all my spiny mice were in the middle of uh, being pregnant. Oh. So there weren't any babies. So I usually I haven't brought any of my crested geckos because I wanted them to be at a good age and size where they were hardy. Yeah. And I don't know how everyone else raises theirs. I actually from day one start them in a small bioactive. Yeah. And then grow them up from there. And there may still be some bean beetles in these, but usually they get at these size they get. Flies, bean beetles. Oh, like I don't give up anything that can grow for obvious reasons. Yeah, because they just disappear. And, and this sassy, this is their parents. Yeah. Uh, her name, and she's very skinny right now. She just laid eggs. Yeah. And he's very skinny because all he wants to do is have sex. Yeah. So when we, after the show, they'll get separated for a while, so he will actually have a meal rather than going, okay, really nice. <laughs> Um, I mean, she has a beautiful red girl right, right now, I mean. So when she's not flared up, she is pastel pink. Okay. Her name is Aurora. Um, I can't remember. It's a very, it's a very good, uh, very reputable um, crested gecko only, but her mother is Lush, the first pink crested gecko. Oh, cool. I unfortunately do not know the lavender and cream uh, his heritage. Yeah, I mean. So, I brought them so everybody could see what the potential is for the children. Yeah. And her name is Aurora. He's Prince Philip. Alright. Yeah, I got it. I got yeah. it. Makes sense. And Aurora was actually the name she came with, which is why he got named Prince Philip. Yes. Um, but yeah, this has been like a two-year project for me, uh, and this is like my first debut of my my little yeah my little hobgoblins. And then this is what's left of last year's uh, leopard geckos, mostly their emmerines. Yeah. Some of them have the giant gene, some of them don't. Uh, I only have one female left. Is the giant a, um, a recessive gene or is it more of an incomplete, incomplete dominant? It's an incomplete dominant because okay. you can have... So from my but, observations, um, you can have a normal and a giant get together and they could have a giant, a normal size or standard size, yeah. or a large normal. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. No. It's so. It's, it's also, that's still just the random size variation. Also. Um, I I usually can tell what they are because of the egg size. Yeah, that makes sense. The giant, the giants, their eggs are twice as big as the normals, and normally I I have somewhere like egg comparisons, but I don't. Really, I'm sorry. Yeah. Look um, around the side. Down around the side. Um. But I've, I just got some black, some black knife uh, mixes, so I'm hoping in another two or three years to have some black knife, so I'm really excited about that. Um, I'm also working on a couple of other little things that I am tinkering with. Yeah. Like I have um, a little boy at home right now, and instead of having straight stripes, he has wavies. Okay. And he ha he's um, bright, bright yellow, then orange, and then dark, 
knocked off the wall. Yeah. So, he, he's very sweet. He, ha he has the giant temperament. Yeah. He just, he's still baby though, so, you know, I think he's like four, four months, five months. Yeah. So, I'm really excited about him. I'm waiting for him to get big and strong, so, my, my usual policy with uh, the leopard geckos is I actually wait till they're two years old instead of where everyone's like, oh, as soon as they hit a year in a weight size, because I found that first first time moms, yeah. if they're a year old, their babies either the babies don't survive or the eggs are not fertile. Oh, and, something, oh something else can happen to the mom. Yes. Hi guys, I just wanted to make a quick video talking, so um, just got done edit editing this for the most part, about the pop this in as the last scene. Anyway, thanks for watching the video. Please like, subscribe. Um, it was a great time at the reptile show. I did what I could to be safe, obviously the mask. Hope you didn't mind the audio quality, but you know, I had to make sure I was safe. And um, let's just hope that I didn't get sick. Alright, see ya.